Hello, my name is Jeff Fenner. I'm a senior Salesforce consultant for Red Path Consulting Group. My presentation will primarily focus on adoption, value realization, and how to determine whether your sales team is uh, using the application and what telltale signs can be seen in Salesforce to make that happen. So on the screen you see that uh, there's value realization dashboard and, and a little background is you know, you've just spent uh, maybe tens of thousands of dollars, maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars implementing Salesforce for your sales team. And you've now decided that you know you want to make sure that you're getting value, that you're seeing value in the application. So it's a good idea before implementation uh, to sit down with leadership, managers, and the like to determine what success looks like in the application. And uh, basically, you know, what measurements should be made to show that you know, Salesforce is actually assisting and helping and then in the end what measurements can be shown to determine whether or not your users are actually using the application. It's a lot of money to spend for an application just to sit on a shelf and nobody logs into. So a value realization dashboard. Um, it's believed that for businesses to realize that value and the use of Salesforce they need to set attainable goals. Once these goals are established, metrics can be created to align with those goals and allow for greater visibility when it comes to achieve those goals. This dashboard was designed with these thoughts in mind. The business has determined what its goals with the application are and then asked for metrics to highlight those items. The following will represent those discussions. So can't click into these to show you the actual reports, but you know some, some sales teams have determined that uh, in order to really see things happening, they need to be determining what kind and how many activities have happened in the last seven days or the last 30 days or the last six months. And then, of course, measuring that against your opportunity creation and opportunities that move through the stages. Uh, it's hoped that there would be a sweet spot found uh, when it comes to how many activities does it take for an opportunity to close when versus how many opportunities is typical for opportunity that's not going to make it that kind of thing so this is, these are all things that salesforce can be used to measure so looking at the different dashboards here we have you know opportunity analysis in the last 30 days for the fiscal year and then you know different graphical displays of how those opportunities show. And then, of course, you know, activities. These activities are basically how many activities and what type of activities are taking place based on an account grade. If you're measuring your accounts that you do business with based on number of sales or number of opportunities or number of uh, times they reach out to you, whatever you use to gauge a good account, a good revenue generating account versus one that's not so great, um, those can be used to determine how that happens. So, a little closer to the activity analysis, uh, basically, you know, building a report that can show you the quantity of activities based on that account grade. And again, you can use different terms, whether it's seven days, whether it's a month, whether it's an annual thing. A little deeper into the activity analysis, these are opportunities reports that will show you what kind of activity is working. So you can look at one versus lost opportunities. You, again, term can be last 30 days, can be current fiscal year, could be quantity of opportunities created, that kind of thing. And some miscellaneous analysis, average of activity, as I said earlier, based on close type, the sweet spot for those close one activities seems to be just over three activities per opportunity versus those that are being lost, there's only two and a quarter activities. So it may be a goal of the organization for an opportunity that you want to close to perform at least three, maybe more activities. Basically, it's telling your organization that the more touches, the more chances for an opportunity to close one. And then of course you, your values of those opportunities. You can do different uh, types of dashboards. So with value realization, you may also want to talk about sales leadership. So you've, you've decided what will show 
that there is value realization, but now how do we accomplish value realization? Well, we need to have our sales leadership to be able to be equipped to look at their team's activity and determine whether or not they're getting the same realization. What things do they have to do to actually get that realization? So um, you can do dashboards that can show pipeline by product. Uh, some of the uh, opportunities out there that are past due, again, looking at close date, if I create an opportunity that typically has a 90-day close ratio, this will show whether that's an actual good window to put in place. If it's typically taking six months to close an opportunity, then I want to be t teaching my sales team to push the close date out at the beginning so that it doesn't get past due. So your sales leadership dashboard is designed to give leadership what they need to set expectations and drive their businesses toward more effective use of the tools within Salesforce. In turn, it's hoped that by driving the business through the tool, greater numbers will be experienced in sales. This, in turn, would prove to bring value realization to the business. It all rolls up, right? So more opportunity analysis, uh, looking closer at pipeline by product. We're seeing you know, total value of opportunities out there and how they're broken down by price group. Some of operation uh, opportunities that are out there versus past due opportunities. There's a total of, in this screenshot, $4.8 million out there, but 1.2 million of it is past due. And then your analysis of one ops by rep, rep over the last 30 days. Another key ingredient to determining adoption is users actually logging in. There are out of the box reports that enable you to determine how many users have logged in in the last seven days. So let's get into adoption metrics. So we've looked at value realization, we've looked at sales leadership. Let's, you know, how, how do we want to measure whether or not there's strong adoption of the application that you've just spent thousands of dollars on? So some of this will look very much like your value realization and your sales leadership, but broken down a little bit more. So the adoptions metrics dashboard provide more detail for sales management when seeking to improve usage of the tool. There'll be an opportunity analysis of so you the dollars that are out there uh, in the pipeline based on the probability. Opportunities that are out there uh, in the pipeline based on stage. You can show opportunities created in the last seven days broken down on a daily basis. Again, it really depends on your business, but if, you, if your business is that the sales people should only have to open seven opportunities a month. Well, then you modify these dashboards to reflect that type of thing. Get your opportunity analysis, one versus lost. It's not always an accurate portrayal. Bear in mind that uh, when somebody's marking something closed loss, they may not have never put in the full dollar amount that they were seeking versus those that are won when they win. There, it's an accurate dollar portrayal. So just something to keep in mind. More opportunity analysis. Open versus past due. Breaking down the activities, again, by account grade. Numbers of activities, again, going back to that idea that, you know, we want between three and four activities created per opportunity to get a closed one. We're going to be paying attention to how many my team are creating on any given day. A low period might be a holiday. So you've been tasked to uh, build these things out. Well, the good news is that Salesforce Labs provides uh, an app that you can download that gives you adoption dashboard. So you don't even have to build. Now, you saw some wonderful graphical imagery uh, in the presentation that I just presented. Some of that is based on this, but most of it is based on some custom ones that I built based on the business I was working with at the time. So out of the box, this is what the adoption dashboard looks like. And with the adoption dashboard, you also get company performance dashboard, 
and you get uh, user adoption, key features adoption, and sales and marketing adoption. So those are basically reports and dashboards built for you that you can then modify uh, for your use, the way your company does business. So as with any dashboard in Salesforce, you can click in to the dashboard and you can see the baseline reporting and you can customize it to add other fields or choose to make it present in another way. So again, out of the box, you get you know number of completed activities. Now this is a demo org, so the numbers are going to be sparse, but you can get you know to the base of the report, clicking in, and then clicking customize, and you can choose the date span that you want, whether it's the last 30 days or the last quarter or the last seven days, whatever you'd like. And of course, once again, bring in the various fields that you want. So we'll close that. Backwards so that we don't lose this. Going back to the dashboard. Once again, you know, if the measure of good sales activity is adding new accounts, well, then you can use a chart like this to determine how many accounts there are being added to Salesforce on any given month. Or if your sales activity involves adding new contacts, you know, leads whatever the, the, the case may be, what, what you choose to measure by can be displayed in these dashboards. We even, because of adoption, part of adoption is determining whether or not the report features are being used. We have a widget right here out of the box for number of custom reports created. Again, a good, a good signifier that things are happening. People are using the application. Okay. So let's go look at another one. Let's look at uh, user adoption. We will count basically users using the system. You can see in the shadow uh, as this is refreshing, you have your login wall of shame. Again, these may be dashboards that you only want to make visible to senior leadership or your system admin. They don't necessarily have to be visible to the whole company. But you know, again, giving you enough information to manage your users, your sales teams. So our login wall of shame is empty, um, but we are showing the, the users that have logged in in the last 14 days and a number of times they've logged in. Now, you may choose to block out integration, only wanting to see the users that have actually logged in all user logins in the last 14 days. How many people that are active have actually logged in? And then you can break it down even further by department, role, region. We've got an eastern region and a western region and a midwest region. All those things can be shown here. Go to sales and marketing, you know, again, some of this is covered by some of the dashboards that I laid out in my presentation, but you know you can look at you know leads that are coming in by source to show you know which marketing efforts are producing the most leads. You may choose that in the end uh, July looks like no leads came in via advertisements, so you may choose not to do advertisements anymore. We're seeing we get you know some employee referral. We get a lot of web stuff and some that's not tagged. Give you new opportunity trends. It can show, you know, over a, a certain period of time, the number of opportunities that were created. In this case, because this is with demo org, my demo information went in in February, and not much has happened since. So. If this were a real org, I'd be looking at the sales team going, okay, what's going on? Why aren't you creating opportunities? Can use a neglected opportunities widget, and this is based on, uh, you know, in this case, it's you got an opportunity that's been sitting out there, but there's no activity for the last 30 days. In your business, that may be okay, but 
you require some activity within 60 days. So you may change this to last 60 days to reflect your business processes. Drilling into that, see the baseline report. You can see that you've got a transaction report or an opportunity report based on owner and you've chosen all time you want to pull everything but you want to say that out of everything you want those that have last activity greater than the last 30 days there's a field within I think most of the objects in Salesforce that show last activity so that's any time something happened to that record or related to it all right so in this case we're going to show all opportunities that have last activity greater than the last 30 days. And again, you can amend that to your business practice. If it's, if it's an opportunity that typically takes 120 days or 180 days to close, then maybe 30 days is a, is a little too small of a window. You may choose to change that to last 60 days. Beyond that, you've got opportunities by stage, how they're entered, open ops without key fields. In the interest of data cleanliness and data management, you may choose to mark a number of fields that should have data in them. So a dashboard like this would show you that there are open opportunities without keys, fields populated. And what are those fields? Next step is blank. DB competitor is blank, type equals blank. So what basically what they're saying in this setup, in this report setup, is that for an opportunity to have good data, it's going to have next step information. It's going to tell somebody what the competitor is to us and what type of an opportunity it is. Without that, we're not getting good data on our opportunities, and they're not being managed. Again, good sales tools. Our lead funnel, how many leads are coming in based on date? How many leads are coming in and then getting converted? Again, all, the, all those things that can be used to determine whether your application is getting used. And again, these are all examples. You can choose to use one or none of these and make your own. Um, but if the data is in Salesforce, you're going to be able to get this type of adoption information that you need. And that is all for me today. Good luck with your adoption.